Welcome back to Gun and Shot TV. This is Chris, and uh, I just posted a video where I went through and I cleaned my GP100 that's sitting on the stand up here. Um, and I was showing how to clean that um, and how to get the burn rings off, you know, do a full deep clean. And there was a couple people that were wondering if they could use the lead remover cloth that I showed on blued guns. Well, according to the package, it said that care must be used on blued and plated firearms because it can remove the finish. So I would advise that you do not use it on a blued gun. Um, theoretically, you could very lightly use it and it shouldn't hurt anything, but you know, I, I'm just going to tell you to stay away from that blanket unless the manufacturer changes the label on the package. It's telling you that you probably shouldn't use it. So... Uh, I figured I'd show you how I clean a blued gun. Now I was looking at some of the some of the blued guns I had handy, um, and everything I've got is actually really clean. Um, so it kind of causes problems because I can't show you how to get burn rings off if there are no burn rings on what I've got. Um, I've got, like I said, quite a few different guns, but they're all actually pretty good. This one's a little bit shiny, but that's not lead. That's actually like finish wear. Um, this is an old. World War II lend lease one. And then someone was even asking, they said they had, uh, I think it was an Enfield top brake. Uh, I've got a Webley top brake, but once again, there's not enough crud on there to make it really worth cleaning. Um, then I, I had a stroke of genius. I thought about what about my uh, Blackhawk? So on my Blackhawk itself, this is pretty gross because I shoot a lot of hand loads. So, on my Blackhawk, um, let's pull out the cylinder, and I'll show you what it looks like. And it's kind of nice. It's, I feel like it's cheating cleaning a Blackhawk, because single actions are so easy to clean, because everything kind of comes apart. Um, so, there's some crud in there, but it uh, looks like maybe a piece of leather off the holster. I don't know how that would get in there. But looking at the cylinder, you can see there's pretty heavy burn rings, um, and they're not terrible, but uh, on, on a gun that has really bad ones, you won't see any part where the rings stop, but uh, to get that off, like I said, you don't want to use that cloth, or you could mess up the bluing, so I'll show you how I clean this from scratch, and then we'll, uh, we'll go through and uh, demonstrate how I get those burn rings off, but to start with, same thing as cleaning the... GP100 stainless revolver. You're going to start with cleaning the barrel and the cylinder. To do that, like I said, I, you know, on the GP100 video, I started with a boar snake, ran that through a bunch, and then I transitioned to brushes and hops. So I'm just dipping, getting a little bit on the brush, and then I'm just going to run that through each cylinder to get to get some cleaning started okay oh, actually I'm still going to need that and then I'm going to do the same thing and get some fluid going down the barrel to get any of that falling loose Now that I have solvent in the barrel and in the cylinder, I'm going to grab uh, what I'm using as a chamber brush to get the cylinder throats. Now, or the chamber throats, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, it's late. But uh, I like to use a 40 caliber brush for 357 or 38 special, uh, 9 mil, all those calibers uh, that are the same you can use a 40 brush. If it's a different caliber, you'll need to figure out what the right brush to get those chamber rings is. But inside the chamber, where it necks down into the throat, you'll get burn rings and crap that builds up. So I like to use a bore brush that's bigger and get all that out. I found, just like on a bottleneck rifle cartridge, if you don't use a brush to get the stuff out of the chamber, you're going to have problems. 
And, you know, it doesn't take that much extra effort to go through and get a second brush. But it's going to take care of all the feeding problems and all the stuff. Um, in this case, just quickly spreading around, uh, I'm going to do the same on the front. So I've got some solvent that leaked out, and I'm just going to kind of gently distribute it around the cylinder face here. So now that can start working. As you can see, there's a bunch of crap on my hand already that ran off. Now this gun isn't super, super dirty, but it does have some funk on it. Um, while we're waiting for that to kind of break up a little bit, I'm just going to wipe the gun down with solvent. Um, specifically, I know that Hops 9 stuff does not affect the bluing. It's not going to eat your gun. It can cause issues with a nickel, so do be careful if you have a nickel gun. I would look for a different solvent that doesn't say that it's going to eat nickel. Uh, although you can use it to clean nickel, you just want to make sure you don't leave it sit anywhere, but, you know, I, I get nervous about stuff like that. But I, I just pretty much try and get everywhere that there's going to be any trace of carbon buildup from firing. Particular areas to well, look, make sure that you don't have any crud are up around the forcing cone, the top of the frame here, and the back of the frame where the screw for the sight is. I find that always, always builds up crap. If you find that there's a bunch of crap in there, what I like to do is I'll use a pick. This is just a crappy pick from Harbor Freight. And pretend you're a dentist cleaning someone's teeth. You don't want to actually poke the gun and, and possibly damage the bullying. But if you just take the end of the pick and just gently kind of scrape with it. So you're not actually going to scrape the underlying surface, but so you can get any caked on crud off. And I kind of will just go over and scrape it a little bit to break it loose. Because it does build up in this back corner for some reason. And then uh, I'll go through with my solvent soaked rag and you can see a bunch of it came out. And you'll just kind of repeat that process. And, and this will help any area that's hard to get to. You can kind of just use your pick and, and go in and just scrape it gently. I, a lot of 22s I use this thing like on the chamber faces and stuff because 22s are notoriously dirty. And so there's always crap building up. And it's hard it's hard to get to is the big problem. A lot of people don't really like cleaning their guns because they don't have you know a dollar set of picks to get you into all those special areas. So... We now have our cylinder should be pretty pretty good to uh, scrub out. I'm just going to run through real quick with a spiral brush uh, in an effort to break any lead or crap that's still in the barrel loose. Okay, and then you can do the same thing on your cylinder. Now I'm just going to use just regular Hops 9. Um, the gun isn't actually totally, totally dirty. The big thing that it's got going on is it's got burn rings on the cylinder. So we don't need to, and I'm going to actually do something real quick. I'm going to scrub the barrel where the pin was and make sure that I get any of that loose crap off. Pretty much cleaning your gun is just about attention to detail. It's about looking at little areas where, oh, you know, there's crap there. As long as you keep up on it and constantly keep getting the crap out of them, it'll stay much cleaner and much easier to work on. It's when you never clean it and just let the stuff cake on and on and on that then you try to clean it and it just does not work. So I'm going to take my three patches here um, that should be thick enough and start cleaning my cylinder. As you can see, a bunch of crud did come out. Um, I'm a little low on foaming for cleaner right now. I was having problems getting it to work right. So if the gun were totally dirty, I would use foaming cleaner. I ordered some more from Amazon, um, but I haven't actually gotten it yet. So I'm just going to skip the foaming cleaner part. But all that would really be would just be me repeating this process with the foaming cleaner. And you've already seen that in the stainless cleaning video. So I don't feel like it's worth the extra effort.
as you can see the barrel is pretty nasty on this and most of you probably will not have anywhere near that amount of fouling I shoot a lot of my own cast hand hand lubed everything hand everything loads and they're they're really dirty so um, that's just the nature of how I shoot but they are cheap which is which is why I shoot them so 250 a box I'll take the time to put a little extra cleaning in So we're actually getting pretty clean patches out um, for just doing one solvent brushing cycle. So I'm not really going to worry that much about it. It looks pretty good. That's pretty much clean. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, so now we have pretty much all the normal cleaning stuff that you would do every time done. Um, the burn rings actually a lot of them pretty much wiped off by hand so this is probably the worst example I could have picked because they they just weren't that bad but how I'm going to clean the rest of them there is still some burn rings in areas um, but what I like to do is I'll get brass brush bronze brush whatever you want to get you can get these three packs of brushes if it's a python or if it's some really expensive high-end gun don't start with a brass brush start with a plastic brush Usually in these three packs, you'll get a steel, a brass, and a plastic brush. Start with the plastic one. Don't start with this. But what I like to do is I will just take some solvent, put it on a cloth like this. And since we can't use that lead remover, this is the best option we have. So now I have my brush. I have the cloth to get the crap that rubs off off. You can see how dirty this is. So we'll see how dirty we get it after some gentle scrubbing. But the brass should be softer than the bluing, so it should not strip the bluing off the cylinder face. But it should be stiff enough that it's going to help the solvent break up any powder following. So you can see we've got some definite shit there. Um, and to some extent, you're never going to get all of it off on a blued gun without scrubbing the bluing off. It's just really hard to do. But I usually go until like I can see the part where Ruger Electro penciled the serial number. And then I figure I did a good enough job. Um, So that is now much better. Um, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit for you here. Uh, you can't really see any burn ring. There's a little discoloration in the bluing, and you're not going to be able to scrub that away. But you can see, like, the electro pencil area is really sharp. Um, you can perfectly see where it's engraved. And it's, you know, it's it's got, like, a nice shiny finish to it now. So as much of that fouling that's going to come off is off. Sometimes with these, you'll get a bunch of powder in the center um, center pinhole. So what I like to do for that, and it doesn't work on every gun because obviously they're, you know, it's only going to work on guns with this size center pinhole, but a 22 bore brush will fit down there. So you can just go through with 22 patches and, and a bore brush and everything and clean that if it's dirty. I find cleaning it off and keeping everything clean, it doesn't really get that dirty. Um, so our cylinder actually looks really nice. It wasn't terribly dirty. Uh, if you do have some crud in the back, you can kind of scrub to make sure that the notches are clear um, for the hand. And then the other thing you can do, now that we have our solvent and our brush, hit those areas that I talked about that stuff builds up and make sure that all that loose following is now wiped off with the brush and onto this cloth and then the gun should be cleaner and easier to work with next time um, I don't really see any major issues that I'm going to worry about keeping cleaning this it actually looks really good um, same as with the double action revolver 
you now want to put some oil on the components of the gun that are going to need oil. And that does two things. A, it keeps you from having to take the gun all the way apart if you constantly are putting fresh oil on and flushing it. B, it will um, it'll just make everything smoother and everything work better. Uh, make sure the pin is closed. If you don't have the pin closed, you uh, stand a chance of breaking your transfer bar because the pin tensions the transfer bar to keep it from hanging up. I have seen people <laughs> try and work the action without the pin and it snaps the transfer, transfer bar right off. Um, but we're just going to take our oil and I like to put a couple drops on the pin here. I like to put some drops on each side of the hammer. Uh, if you want to drop one down the transfer bar um, in the cylinder latch here uh, on both sides of the trigger and like I said the big thing I'm doing is I'm using too much oil hoping that a run through and any excess will be flushed out. Um, you can also go through and use a patch and put oil in the barrel. I don't worry about that specifically on the hops 9 um, bottle it says that you can use hops to prevent rusting. Uh, it's not as good as like a thick oil, but you don't want a thick oil in your barrel anyways. So I don't mind leaving hops in the barrel. I will tend to wipe down the outside with a little bit of just regular gun oil. If you're going to use extended, you know, extended storage and you're not going to be using the gun or if you intend to go out in heavy weather, I would use some lanolin to wipe the gun down or go to the one lube test and you know there's I think there was three products there was frog lube WD-40 specialist and something else that uh, were the best at uh, preventing rust I'll link that in the description if you're interested to look at that test and decide what oil you want to use for yourself because um, that's one of those personal preference things I'm not going to sit here and argue oil all day so now we have our revolver pretty much as clean as it's going to get we've oiled it it's ready to you put back together, let the hammer down, open the loading gate, pull your pin, and getting this back in is just kind of a process of popping it in. This is different for other revolvers, but Rugers are pretty easy to pop the pin out and get the cylinder in and out. Once you get it in the right spot, it just slides in. And there you go. I Like I said, I put way too much oil on this to flush stuff through. So, it's going to kind of bleed some oil for a little bit. Uh, I like to let them sit out on a, on a mat with a paper towel or a rag under them and let that excess kind of just run off. Um, it's not going to hurt anything, but if you just put it, you know, put it on your couch or something, it's going to it's going to drain some oil that's probably got some contaminants. You can see like the grips have some crud crud from my hand. But there you go. That's that's how I clean the burn rings off. I just you know, mainly do a regular cleaning, and then when I can't just wipe off, I'll use a brass brush wrapped in a solvent-covered cloth and just gingerly scrub. If you push too hard, you, you could mess it up. Um, if it is an heirloom gun, like I said, start with plastic first and see if the plastic brush will get what you need to get. Um, but this one I've shot quite a bit, and, you know, by cleaning it off, and it looks really nice, uh, it's got some tiny, tiny wear marks uh, from the holster. But other than that, like, it looks like brand new. And if you keep your guns clean and oiled, you really don't have to worry about a lot of, you know, finish degradation unless you're using a, a lot of holster carry. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the, the video of cleaning uh, single action, getting the bluing uh, queen of the burn marks. Uh, if you have any other questions or anything, leave me a comment. But for Gun and Shot TV, this is Chris. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.